Okay, so having uh, gone back to re-recording this game after so many years, I have a question. Yeah? How much Basra news have we actually gone as of late? So for being specific to this game, mm -hmm. which we, for those that would be impossible to know because we uploaded this basically in a hidden box. Yes. Which was in spring of 2017. That long ago, yeah. Let's see. We had uh, the... We had uh, Gakuen Basra, the school Basra anime, which was terrible, come out and then be picked up by Sentai and not Funimation, be released in America without a dub. Mm -hmm. So good luck on ever getting four characters with an English cast. Uh, we had the terrible uh, RPG mobile game thing that came out and died within a single year. It was literally just called Sengoku Basra Party, I think. Oof. That thing was terrible. They tried to introduce two new characters through that. They didn't stick. We had, <clears throat> of all characters, Ieyasu and Oichi in Capcom's mobile card game. All they, right. they were dubbed by their original actors, by Liam O'Brien and by Laura Bailey, which Laura Bailey doesn't do Capcom anymore at all, so that was shocking. Yeah, that's actually kind of nuts. Damn. So I guess at some point Capcom must have gone Union after all, since that was why she didn't do uh, Marvel Infinite. But even that doesn't add up because Street Fighter Fox 6 isn't Union either. That's why they lost a bunch of people. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Ugh. Weird. All right. Well, let me rephrase my question. Has there been any news since we did Boss Earth 3 about a year or so ago? No. Okay. <laughs> it's good to know that we are single-handedly keeping this franchise alive, more or less. I, I, did, I did miss one thing, though. Yeah. We had the, uh, in 2020, we had the 15th anniversary series live stream okay. where they had uh, one of the series producers. They had the voice of Yukimura Masamune, and they had TM Revolution guesting on this stream. Okay. They did a little bit of a series retrospective. They announced a bunch of stupid merchandise mm -hmm. like guitars, rice cookers, sneakers, umbrellas branded with Basra logos and whatnot. Okay. And then they announced a re-release of Sengoku Basura for Sumeragi, which was just a complete edition with all of its DLC still only on PS4. No Switch port, no, definitely no Xbox ever. No PC, no PS5 port to make the game run at, I don't know, 4K or at 120 or anything like that. Anything that would renew interest in the series. And then TM Revolution had to say directly to the producer, hey, you know, you've got a pretty sizable in, uh English audience for uh, for this uh, series. When I uh, whenever I do overseas concerts, my Bossa songs do very well with uh, with the crowds. Yeah, and so he's and so the producer says to TM Revolution, "It's okay, we're not ignoring them." Mm. Proceeds to at that point not have released a game in ten years, and at this point not have released a game in fourteen years. You, you, you think they're doing it on purpose at this point in time? So yeah, Neil's say we are in fact single handedly keeping this franchise alive. Yeah, they're about. I, I joke, but I think, okay, aside from, I think, some reviewers who have done the game or look at the game that have, like, five-digit subscriber count, like, we're some of the only people actually covered the series at this point in time. It's kind of funny. So there is uh, a YouTuber I want to shout out who actually does, I think, have a smaller number than us, but is doing some real good Bossera content right now. Good. Called uh, Profar. I showed you their video a couple of weeks ago where they, yeah, yeah. Where they went in-depth into uh, the gameplay mechanics of Bossera 4 and how some characters do actually have some more complicated mechanics in the Musou genre mm -hmm. to say that because people were saying at the time that Bossera has simplistic combat compared to Musou and no, no not even a little. Not really. Depending on and the he's doing a series retrospective on it. He just did a couple of videos about the first game. Going to go through more of them and he's done some good, uh, good Bossera content lately. Cool. The song you are not hearing right now is literally uh, Utage by TM Revolution. Good shit. This is one of uh, my favorite of the CG openings, and this is going to be uh, one of the last ones you see, so enjoy it while you can. Oh, yeah, this one rules. Uh, I think there's a little bit like weird uh, artifact going on with the, the upscaler, but that's about it. Uh, this and oh, no, I think that four are my favorite intros, definitely. Oh, no, this is in there naturally. The uh, artifacting and bad compression. The weird, uh, like, almost water paint filter on some of the faces, yeah. From yeah. a distance, anyway. Anyway, so I guess with, with that preamble, I can uh, go ahead and get this uh, bitch going. So, what is up, boys? Bomb Brand here What here with the new Let's Play, kind of, for Sango Kubasa 3 Utage. Now, the funny thing is, once upon a time, we actually did do this game, but you didn't see it on this channel. Um, so, here's a weird thing. 
Capcom USA, I think specifically had, maybe not USA, no, it was Capcom in general. They had weird copyright notices going for the opening cutscene, not for this cutscene, but like the gameplay for the, like the in-engine cutscenes for the, some of the characters, it was really weird. Specifically, not Mitsunari, uh, Mitsuhige, that's it. Yes. Matsunaga. Matsunaga. God damn it, so many of them. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, um, yeah, so because of that, I was like, hey, do you want to host this on your channel since your channel's not as, I mean, it's still got an audience, but not as big as the main channel and would rather not randomly getting this nuke one day? And he said, sure. Uh, never got around finishing it because the recording itself was incredibly long and I making thumbnails was a pain in the ass and switching between channels. So eventually, it's weird. I think I might still have the footage, but I think I'm just going to act at the point in time. <laughs> Definitely. I, pr I privated that playlist a long ass time ago, but I still have those first eight to ten videos. Yeah, it was on our, the channel. It I was still have them uploaded. It was like almost the entirety or the entirety of the first recording session we did for that. Yeah, I remember that vividly because I remember saying in that recording, "Hey, we have to cut out early before we finish the last three characters because we're going to the theater to see your name in theaters that day." That's hilarious. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyway, so Utaki is a very funny game because. All right, so if you've been watching the other um, uh, Sangu Boss for videos we've done for this channel, we, the, we did the um, Yukimura... Sonata Yukimura Legend. Thank you. I almost had the name off the top of my head. So we we done that before, and we also done... In, well, we did the major character for Sangu Boss over 3 because there's no fucking weird about this. The entirety of the game, that's, in, that's insane. I could make that happen, but you're going to lose subscriber doing that. We're going to lose subscribers doing that, and we're also, at that point, it's just going to be VOD posting, and that would be incredibly boring. So, with this game, it's actually a lot more compact. Only the main characters have story modes, and, or, sorry, the new characters have story modes, I believe. Yes. And this is more of, I guess, what you could equivocate to Capcom's old tendencies of just making new games, quote-unquote, wholesale for ex their expansions for their existing games. Here's Super a, Turbo. Literally. So here's a very funny thing. Sengoku Boss, Boss Order 3 in the West we got here is one of the, is like practically the only game to not have um, uh, uh, do, 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 Masamune's uh, right hand man. Kojiro. Kojiro playable. He's back in this game. So the man has never seen a Western playable iteration, I think beyond Devil King, right? So here's the funny thing about that. Kojiro was actually introduced in 2 in the first game. Uh, Masamune was literally just like a one-man army, as much as everyone is, but especially he's literally just a Yakuza leader. Yep. And he, he wasn't given Kojiro until 2, and he wasn't made playable until 2 Heroes when they introduced uh, his uh, his rivalry with Matsunaga. Yeah. I want to uh, highlight real quick, because this, this is the first, I think, only time they get real artsy with it. Mm -hmm. Look at how beautiful these menus are. Oh, dude, the animation of the PNGs boot cycling throughout into flipping. It's so good. This, okay. I'm, All the layering and filters. I'm going to already break this uh, this nugget open by may as well do so. This is what I wish Storm was with this presentation. Yeah. I know, obligatory for, for Bob to uh, complain about Storm at this point in time, but I kind of have to. Considering that is like the big albatross at this point for me having not done some stuff. But you know how it'd be. So, this game's also polite, uh, politely, it is also delightfully not too long either. I think we could, we could probably kill us off all in one night, but it's already like almost nine, so probably not. But we will get a damn good head start. Yeah, no, this isn't long at all. This is the length of t like two campaigns in Boss Rift 3. Basically. So, why don't you walk us through who we got really fast? So we have the first time playable character, uh, Matsunage Hisahide. He is ostensibly the actual vi uh, villain of the series because yeah. whenever he comes in, he steals the show from everyone else around him and is made to look like he is uh, stronger than everyone else, L even Oda. Literally designed like Wesker, and we don't have the costume for him <laughs> as of yet. It it's kind of hilarious and great. Kojiro is Kojiro. There's not much you need to say about Kojiro. He's just... He's just your dude. Coolest, most testosterone man on the face of the planet in a very good way. This is uh, this is what you should have as a male mo role model, honestly. A whipped dog, but a very funny whipped dog. Voiced by Kyle and Dub. Yes. <laughs> good stuff. His Japanese voice is Sasuke. <laughs> I did not know that. Time to play as a religious zealot. Splitting... Uh, spreading literally uh, the word of Catholicism 
because the leader uh the leader that he worships is uh literally Francis Xavier. Oh man, okay, that's something. Japanese Frenchy. D just Don not Pierre from Soul Calibur, yeah. Not literally, they're just having fun with uh stuffy nobility. Oh wait. Before we move on, can I make mention something really funny? Hmm. You can no longer legally play as Don Pierre in, in Soul Calibur anymore. Were they only a DLC character in 5? Yes, and also uh, debuted in Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, which I should say you can play that now through PlayStation Plus on PS5. As strange as that is. I know, right? That is the only time you'll get to play as that character now, legally. <sighs> Tony I Oliver. Ho <laughs> I hope you... Lelouch's Japanese voice. <laughs> I hope you, I hope you like fat jokes Ooh. for as much as Japan can actually portray a fat character. This guy is there's no way this man is more than 170 pounds. Ukiora's vo English voice actor. Yep, good shit. So, do you want to make the Vic joke or should I make the Vic joke? Go for it. Okay, so the man's voiced by Vic in English oh. English dubs. Very funny story about Vic. Another ruling came uh, came handed down literally yesterday. He owes every uh, everyone that is currently that he is currently countersuing four hundred thousand dollars. This judgment literally came out yesterday. <laughs> oh man, that's oh boy. Man burned all the bridges and got burned his ass back. I guess okay, <laughs> that's something. <sighs> anyway, this man's a uh, very uh, pivotal uh, is a bit of an important character for uh, Oda's story overall. So pretty good. Well, that's very funny because we were just looking at the trophy list for that game. Very funny. Play V before you play X. They are similar, but these are not games that you can swap between. You will get lost, especially if you're trying to actually do the unlocks. Play those games with a guide. You need to play those games with a guide to know how to get your unlocks. Believe me, it is important. Yeah, and our last man of the hour is Saratobi Sasuke. Yes, that's Sasuke. So this, he is very interesting. He's basically the straight man to Yukimura and... Uh, Japanese Dio. Japanese deal also. And who, who, who was it? Uh, Tiger of Kai. I had to work my way to that one. He, he's a straight man set, and he's a very cool dude in general. So one of the most fun, fast uh, gameplay sets in, in general. Um, he's going to be very fun. I'm going to imagine you're probably going to lead off with uh, Mitsuhide. Matsunaga. Matsunaga. I, I was going to go with that the first time. <laughs> Sorry, I've been out of Basra for a very long time. My head space is almost exclusively in Dragon Ball right now, so if you have to forgive me, guys. It's okay. Mitsuhide is right here. True. We're almost there. Uh, I imagine I'll play Kojiro next. Yeah. Someday I'll get to play as Matsunaga. That's okay. <laughs> Today is just not that day. So this is difficulty select, right? Yes. I have all of the characters uh, maxed out and with their max efficiency weapons, so we're going to be playing on the highest difficulty, which is called Heaven. Let me grab my camera translate. Yep. So that I make sure I'm actually on the right one. It's not quite a nightmare like it is in uh, some other Capcom games. Okay. For some reason, it's calling it Vasala. <laughs> okay. Let's pretend that says Valhalla. Uh, and not that it's just misreading it. I was thinking Vaseline Halls, honestly. Kind of like the guy that would scream my name is Yobu Mats. Okay, I don't know what that means. You're going to have to remind me. I don't know who that character is. I need There's, sauce. There is a character in Sengoku San San Basara technically named Yobu. That would be Yoshitsugu's uh, court uh, court name. Mm. Uh, Yoshitsugu is... The mummy uh, man, yes. Yes. This is really funny how uh, first major Sekiro boss. Baz will get to it someday. I did yeah. fight that... Wait, Sekiro, sorry. Sekiro. I like how they're repackaging uh, old CG, like literally the yeah. CG from uh, Three Vanilla's intro for this. I would like to say whoever edited this using After Effects, they did a pretty good job. I, for one, cannot ha uh, handle graphic e editing in After Effects. It's a fucking tedious tour and a half. So well, they the did pretty good. The funny thing is, I don't think they create new real in-engine or pre-rendered or whatever you would call it, proper uh, graphics for this game. I think they just uh, create... Um, lower scale i don't know what you would call it but not like full cutscene style yeah yeah uh, stuff for it they're basically just like but, using after effects to create new packages for characters without going the full hog and making whole new videos so can i actually request something yeah i know last time you suck exclusively to the the, the alt costume but could we actually alternate between the alt costume and the default costume because i genuinely like the the, the main the main outfit i was going to turn back from this no matter what i do not like this costume oh interesting i mean this is not a man that was built for bright colors, least of all the color purple. Yeah, you, you spent the entirety of the original recording just on this one. I was kind of surprised by that, considering how sharp this one looked. 
uneven, sure, but yeah. I actually think that a lot kind of lends credence to his look. I should say that they actually did a great job in upgrading uh, your uh, your weapon mechanics from uh, from the original. Yeah. Whereas before, you just had uh, your slate uh, your slate of weapons, and you would sometimes uh, get weapons that had higher stats. You can actually both upgrade and further customize uh, your individual weapons, Ooh. and they actually have I think perks that you can set. Cool. So this one has a flat bonus of twenty four hundred to your attack before you do any of the individual. Uh, before you do any of the individual equips, and uh, that uh, rainbow thing is that rainbow barrel is a lottery. So you get uh, tickets for a lottery item in the shop. That's you roll them and you get certain items for free or money for free. It also lookies means Matsunaga is an ally, and we we stand him for that. That is a joke. Yes. Uh, in this game, because we haven't gotten to four yet, you can still only sl uh, select one uh, R2 attack yeah. that you carry into battle. He has one that's just fire everywhere, one of them that is a mounting uh, uh, gunpowder explosion, yeah. and one of them that is a command grab, grab someone by the throat and do severe damage to one enemy. Hey, that bottom one, the explosion one, isn't that the one where like he spreads out like gunpowder from his position and then like he can detonate and it's a huge explosion around him? Yes, but I think it's because he has regular attacks that can also spread gunpowder without triggering it immediately. I Ooh. think this is just a flat detonation of any and all gunpowder you've currently stocked. All right. Also, one quick shout. Uh, since we're using the upscale for this also, so that we're no longer recording this at 720p, we are at 2K with this effectively. I would like to say with the aliasing going on, uh, Matsunaga's eyes are like shimmering between two different lightings. It is very funny yeah. as he's breathing back and forward. It's just funny little bit like this. Utage was uh, the first game that introduced the character switching mechanic, which is for some reason on L1 and X, you can actually swap from your primary character to your partner character. You'll remember that in 3 Vanilla, I just had my partner set as, where are you? Was it just Mitsunari? And just as Matsu the entire ah, game yeah. because because Matsu could heal you. I would do that again since you can actually swap uh, swap and play as her because all of the characters from the pre almost all of the characters, the ones that mattered anyway, yep. from the previous two games have been re-added into this game as characters that don't have stories but are playable in the other modes. Question. Yes. Does that extend to Oda's wife? Is no, no here? No is Car not <laughs> characters that are that are dead are still dead. I should clarify Wait. this with characters who are alive are uh, alive at this point in the story are playable again. Characters who are dead have still. Wait. <laughs> hey, no, hey. no, he may die. No, yeah, I know, but like I thought, the big red man also died. Big red man, Chris Abbott. Yeah, um, I thought he died. Hideyoshi isn't here. Wait, Hideyoshi isn't playable. I thought Hideyoshi was playable. Uh, he's back in four. Ah, okay. And no is still nowhere to be found. Well, she died in the first game. I know. We need more woman, though. Damn it. No. Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, they also changed it so you can swap between your L2 button being hero time, which is stop time for 10 seconds and extend that timer by doing big combos. Yep. To another mode, which is which you used to have in Bossera 2, which was... For a brief period of time, just get a huge attack boost. I'm going to stick with hero time because that's ultimately more useful. Yeah, especially since, uh, depending on the character, you can probably extend it that heavily. Probably not on par with uh, Iyasu, like basically just standing in infinite time, uh, time stoppage. But, you know, pretty cool uh, regardless. Yeah. Uh, this is the... Oh, wait, have they not done it yet? Okay, I guess it doesn't happen until... Four... I was going to say, they changed the character inscription system that I mentioned at the end of three, so that instead of taking four slots to equip character-specific perks, you only have to use one. Mm. But the item slate of various effects is all still the same. Okay. All right, ready to rock and roll? Yeah, now I'm ready to go proper. The important characters in this campaign have actually been uh, given entirely new stages that were not in... Uh, even at all so it goes the, the stage count goes up from 38 to 48 ah okay whoa yeah these <laughs> oh man pre-rendered yeah and not even just that the alias thing going on with the lines oh my god anytime you get uh the uh the widescreen bars is uh it's pre-rendered yeah holy shit the rich color though my god let's jump on the cat 
I hope so. It's a little bit more mute, but that's probably just because of my monitor being on an orange setting right now. <laughs> God damn, this is pretty to look at, though. Once again, shout out to the fact that this is running on the MT Framework Light Engine. This engine fucking rules. And it's so annoying that Capcom just kind of left by the wayside. For as much I, as I do like the RE engine, this engine, like, you can run it on a fucking poster and you can get some incredibly looking graphics. They got these games running on the Wii. If they converted yeah. to light, they could have had Street Fighter 4 on the Wii, no problem. I mean, you shouldn't because you wouldn't have been able to do DLC characters and patches, but you could have. Street Fighter 4 didn't have DLC anyway, so that wouldn't matter too much. Okay, you couldn't have had, uh, you couldn't have done uh, patches, but yeah. still, you could have gotten a version of it on there. Yeah, no, it's okay, guys. Uh, playing, They put the Super Street Fighter 4 on the 3DS. That is true. That is a monstrosity and a half, by the way. The fact that they did that. One touch sonic booms is still fucking insane. Anyway. Yeah, they did the same thing that they did for um Tekken Tag on Wii U. Yeah. Um also there was a Tekken game that did come out to the 3DS. I forgot exactly what the Tekken name. Prime. Tekken Prime. It's interesting because it has young Heihachi playable as as actual character and there's no tag system. So I've been meaning to try a game out for a bit now. <laughs> hey, eventually. Anyway, so other things about this game. Uh, dropped in 2011. Yes. Um, I, I want to say this is probably during a drought of Dynasty Warriors games. I could be wrong about that. No, this was... Uh, this would have come out at the at roughly the same time as uh, Gundam 3 and as uh, Dynasty Warriors 7. So funny enough, this still would have been the best playable Musou game by this time, give, give or take. Yes. Because for what it's worth, despite my... Growing appreciation for Dynasty Warriors Gunner 3, despite this fucking story progression. Yeah. Uh, it's still... Sorry, I just took those models in for a second. It's it's still moderately... They're still using uh, PS2 models on their uh, generics. Yeah, I know. It, it still looks like Final Fantasy 10 NPCs, funny enough. That's the best way I can describe it. Yeah. If you know, you know. Um, Riku's brother and everything. Yeah. Literally called brother. Literally called brother, true. Yeah. Um, what was it going on with that, though? Right, so this was still pretty much the de, de facto Warriors game you were going to get during that time period. It was a bleak time before Pi Warriors 1 dropped. And it was still a somewhat bleak time before we got to. <laughs> but you know what? That's for a later date. Um, right, maybe I should just also just say this right now. This game is really fucking difficult to get a hold of these days. Um, Pi, so uh, obviously... Uh, not? Well, it's incredibly cheap. It's like $15 if you wanted to import yeah, it. Yeah. And again, PS3 is region free, so that's not really a huge issue. The, more so, the problem is like the age of the PS3 is really trying to catch up with it these days. Okay, that's a different issue, but yes, yeah. the PS3 viability is a different story. Yeah. Now, that being said, I haven't experimented with myself yet. Um, I did try getting Pirate Warriors 1 working on Emulator, and I got some success, but not a lot. I'll have to check the update for it. But this game, I imagine MT Framework should work decently well on Emulator if you want to bet. I haven't tried. Well, Yes, because we have the Boss Row 4 translation patch still going that they've also gotten uh, managed to get running at above 120. Oh, right. That is on PS3, isn't it? Right. Yep. You actually, they've made so much progress with that that if you, you actually can run it on a, on a jailbroken PS3, the patch. Sick. Speaking <laughs> of high PS3. It's been too long. <laughs> is that going to pick up on the mics? Actually, no, I don't think it will because of the noise gets going on right now. And even if it does, like, I'm going to be running some audio filters in post anyway. God. The good old days. But anyway, so I'm just going to... That's this stuff. Right. I'm just going to say up front, um, if you were... Okay, obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably just do my bit right now. If you do want to pirate this game, no one's going to fault you at all for it because th these days... They're not making money. They're not, they're, oof, they're not making games either. <laughs> they're not even making games anymore. <laughs> And if, if it's and not, if you if you, if, if bu you buying it is not owning it, then pirating it is not stealing it. And they're probably never going to make these games again since Hiroyuki Kobay uh, Kobayashi, the producer of Sengoku Basara and Devil May Cry after 3, mm -hmm. also uh, left Capcom last year. Oh. He's, he went to a different company, but he's not with Capcom anymore, and I think he might have also been the producer for Mega Man 11, so... Holy hell. All of their non-Resident Evil projects are basically on... And, and Street Fighter are on hold for a while. So, uh. Wow, that's something, man. I could kind of tell Six was done by a different director anyway, but that's because uh, Ono did leave a while ago, too. And apparently Ono was a real cocksucker, and it didn't come out until years later. Really? The, that, that would explain a lot of the uh, racial stereotypes in Street Fighter 4, but I didn't want... Like, that, that shit is not really too surprising for me. 
No, I meant apparently I've heard that he is a real bastard to his employees and did not listen to their suggestions at all. That sounds right. Or a uh, man who's in charge of a giant ass franchise. Anyway. I heard apparently that uh, they were, there was a planned version of Street Fighter Six that was supposed to come out uh, years earlier, but it was so bad they basically had to scrap it and restart. Wow. That's... I thought I heard... I, now, I haven't heard that in like two years, but so I can't verify if that's actually true or still true at all, but that's something I remember hearing. That's interesting because I remember, what was it? No, I think it was Street Fighter V that actually did have the leak ahead of time. It wasn't, yeah. Yeah, I remember that because I was still following Maximilian's channel at the time, and that's when that happened. Um, no, I was thinking Street Fighter Six got a leak, but no, I guess not. Um, hmm, strange. And also not too shocking. If Hey, if any... No. No, I'm not going to say that. Hmm. See, I was gonna j jokingly say that, hey, if, if if any um data miners manage to get a hold of some Capcom in information, we would love some information on boss rip behind the scenes. But now, you do not want to do that. Capcom has actually had so, uh, some leaks in the last two years, and they've sent their uh, their so to put it Nintendo ninjas after people. Yeah, no. Capcom has uh, been real vengeful lately. I can totally believe. It. Yeah, that's why I was not gonna suggest that. I forgot how hard they hit in uh, the actual heaven difficulty. Maybe I do uh, bring it down for the next story mode. <laughs> well, I'll be the one playing the next story mode, so you don't have to worry right. about doing too much. Maybe. Yeah, and you've got uh, Kojiro also. Yeah, I got Kojiro, and I'll be able to also tag him with Mitsunari as well. Rapier, I think. No, when you, no, no, no quite. When you play on the different difficulties, uh, characters have their uh, different level weapons equipped. Their levels... Uh, they're level two, they're level four, and they're level six. Yeah, uh, and and, and have a, have a difficulty. They're probably going to be having close to their ultimate weapon, pretty much. Yeah. Now, it, it also just realized how funny it is that we we I just wrapped up Devil May Cry one of we're getting on Trio Taga as well. So the reason that's funny is because I mean this will probably have been recorded by the time this goes up. Hopefully, I think we're all saying like a month's worth of pre-recorded footage already. Um, I was going to actually uh play a little bit. of Basra one as well and uh, showcase. Uh, oh, those are in two. Oh yeah, in two and show off the Capcom sub as well, or rather the um, the Spar Sword and the Matsumune using six <laughs> Alistors as well. Very funny stuff. Your characters regenerate on standby, right? No. Oh, they have to die before they uh, regenerate, and I don't remember if they had that implemented yet or not. That's. Interesting. Huh. That's why I appreciate having the backup characters so much. Oh, yeah. Because it's not like necessarily uh, Matsunaga is a bad character or anything, but he's every bit slow and probably not much of a boss killer. He is. Unless a, you use a command grab. He's a setup character. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to switch my uh, trigger attack next, uh, next round. You got time stop, right? Yes, but this is not the end of the stage. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're right. I was thinking it was. There is some muscle memory I need to work out of my brain. Some uh, some con uh, controls actually did swap around going from 3 to 4. In uh, 3, your hero time is just L2. In 4, that's on L1 and R1 together because L2 is being able to manually control your uh, your partner and actually uh, distinctly tell them what to attack. Yeah. I was uh, kind of getting some vibes that this was a, probably a, a very last minute recording. I wasn't sure how much practice you got going into this one. There's not a whole a whole lot that really needs to be worried about, so it's not a huge deal. Okay, no, they do. Uh, they will uh, still recover. I just need to actually get over to them. Cool. Damn, and this is with maximum attack too, or at least what well, looks like close. To, no, it's not close. It's not actually maximum attack, but pretty close to it. Oh no, he might actually be dead. I might have to go back for healing items. Oopsie. <laughs> Yeah, he's just gone. Wow, that's ooh. Well, hopefully, it's just one boss for the next area. Although, considering there was two no. here, um, probably finding both the boys at the same time. Actually, I might have to go back for healing items back down there. Um, I don't I know if you can back. go back. Well, they'll have healing items in the arena. Well, there's one over there too. Oh boy. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess just hold out long enough, get heal healing items, uh, hopefully get uh, hero time going, and hopefully you're good to go. 
Yeah. So, Matsunaga's story here is that he's basically just going around places, digging around, and having fun, and stealing uh, the things that everyone ho uh, holds dear. Yeah. For uh, Masamune and Yukimura, it's their dearest subordinate. Yeah. For the following characters, it's going to be their dearest bond, plural, or I guess omnipotent. That's hilarious. For the final character, it will be his life. <laughs> okay. All you, all you do that can kill me is me. <laughs> you know what's funny though? Because I'm still kind of feel like I'm waiting a little key for some payoff to, because I only watch the anime mostly. I'm still, I feel like I'm still waiting for some payoff to Matsunaga's character and what he's actually plotting. Yeah, un yeah unfortunately, based on how uh, three shook out in anime form that really wasn't going to happen because the movie was just based on the uh, the core plot of three because it came out the same year as this game. So yeah. They weren't able to get this uh, game story in uh, that, especially not only in the length of a movie. And for Judge End, they decided to be bad and only focus on the core story of the game and not even include the Oda plot, oh. which is hysterical because they're like, Hey, yeah, the part at the end of every character's story where Oda's castle rises from the, uh, rises out of out of hell, we're just going to ignore it and just do the main story. We're gonna have some characters off on the side, uh, kill the, uh, the kill Tenkai before he can actually resurrect him. Yeah, I remember the uh, Oda's actual uh, relevance there was he phys he actually like possessed Oichi and that's it. Yeah, he did that for a couple of minutes and then it was over. Yeah, I don't remember like what the climax of the judge actually was offhand. I think about it. Mitsunari versus uh, Ieyasu. That check, just yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get close to there, that dumbass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, mm, well, the good news is the more damage you take, the more uh, boss rear gauge you build up, and hopefully you can get both of them together in one in one spot. Healing items will go away, right? Uh, yes, they do, actually. Okay, gonna want to pick that one up, then. Theoretically, you could probably just pressure them into actually getting the, the win, but that, that, there we go. That's perfect. Uh, Why? Aw, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, do take it off heaven next time. Maybe hopefully I saw them do the I saw Kojiro and Ma and uh They were literally on top of you. That should have been a reversal into whatever you were gonna do. Maybe next battle I actually cost another hmm. Oh I forgot this game actually lets you do that. Well good news is Mossman I don't think can block with a stick door, so that's good. Yeah. Ugh. Errors have been made. All right. Well, as long as Ieyasu is in, oh wait, I, Yukimura. All right, there we go. I do love the bl the Bloodborne backdash though. That's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, Ooh, that's kind of cool. If I can just take out one of them first. It should work. Do you get attack blows after this goes through or not? Uh, no, you just stagger them and, they're, and you're free to get them in a combo. Okay. Fire tornado though, nice. Oh yeah, Masamu is uh, hurting quite a bit now. Yeah. Somehow I think that actually, that actually did hit both of them. Yeah. There we go. Now things are starting to work out a little better. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a good proof of concept about the dangers of actually playing on highest difficulty in this game. No, you fucking don't. He was just charging something interesting. He was going into sick claws. Ah, I see. 
<sighs> Damn it, Boston Moon. He's come, he was coming right at you too for that one. Well, you might flip Yuki more over this. Here's hoping. You did. Yep. Healing items help me. No. Well, not unwelcome, but not quite no. a moment for it right now. Nope. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Not a lot, but... And... Whew. There's one down. This just got a lot easier. <laughs> the last explosion guard cracks, too. Very nice. Ooh. It's now he's not gonna hit it, get hit by it, but hopefully it'll get that cut. did something. And we can actually see his emotion. Okay, are you serious, game? I saw the first hit make contact. The rest should have been real. All right. Well, hopefully he gets hit by the explosion. He does. Okay. Cool. It is a 360. I do. It looks like it's mostly just a giant hitbox that's behind you. So that's really cool. Oh, uh, I thought you had to sit there charging that yourself. That's really cool. Nice to walk away from that one. Nice. I am going to go ahead and, and definitely uh, <laughs> Matsunaga for having some ridiculous AoEs. That's pretty good. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, now I'm definitely going to need your help for the next stage. Can you not change difficulties? Not mid-story. Okay, I'll see what I can do. I'm a little rusty with bots right now, but I'll see what, if I'm able to do anything. Just, uh... Grab any U uh, USB-C controller. Or USB. Oh. Eight is... Eight is... There should be tons of them everywhere. Oh, excuse my. Yeah. <sighs> and just plug that into the front of the PS. I'm gonna ask you if you can do that for me. Here, there we go. Well, it looks like Bob's tagging a little bit earlier than I thought he, I was going to. Oh my god, yeah. PS5 cables do, uh, controllers do work on PS3. They'll take just basically any uh, Bluetooth PlayStation controller of any kind. I genuinely did not think that was going to work. Holy shit. Okay. It wouldn't be that bad in the final stage. It's just that uh, the next one has some bullshit that you will be very familiar with. Ah, goody. 